Welcome to the Yoga Therapy Hour podcast with Amy Wheeler. I've had the good fortune to travel the world learning about yoga therapy on a global scale. And I've been able to meet many of the leaders in the field along the way. I want to share with you what I'm learning as I interview our colleagues from around the world. My hope is that together we can reduce suffering of all sentient beings through our work as yoga teachers and yoga therapists. Welcome to the yearly wrap up for season one of the Yoga Therapy Hour with Amy Wheeler. We started in May 2021 and we had no idea how this podcast would flow throughout the year. Our team worked really hard to try to bring you something that was meaningful, that helped us all to feel more connected to ourselves, to others and to the humanity as well as Mother Earth. And I think we did a good job. And the first thing I'd like to say in this yearly wrap up is, wow, we have some amazing listeners out there. And I wanna share some of the statistics for season one, just so you can get an idea of who you are and who's listening to this podcast. So with this final wrap up, we've had 34 episodes. Like I said, we started in May last year and our average weekly download right now is 546 people listening to the podcast, which is pretty great. We're almost at 11,500 total downloads. And what I can say about that is thank you, thank you, thank you for sharing this podcast. If there's an episode that you have loved and appreciated if you can share that with friends, family, colleagues, anyone who you think might be interested, we so appreciate you sharing our podcast, your podcast, and also going to places like Apple Podcasts and reviewing, writing a review. We have some really wonderful reviews that I'm going to share with you in just a few minutes. Some of the other statistics I'd like to share with you are that most of our people, 70% of our people listen through Apple podcast. Some people listen through Spotify or, you know, through their browser, but most of our people are listening through Apple and I'm looking at all the different countries. I'm going to list the countries. Mostly we have people in the United States, but we also have Canada, the UK, Australia, Denmark, Philippines, France, India, Spain, Mexico, Germany, Sweden, New Zealand, Netherlands, Turkey, Portugal, Hungary, Maldives, Brazil, New Caledonia, Belgium, China, Hong Kong, Costa Rica, Italy, Nicaragua, Israel, Guatemala, Czech Republic, South Africa, Norway, Austria, Singapore, Poland, the United Arab Emirates, Romania, Chile, Qatar, Ireland, Croatia, Bosnia, and the Russian Federation. So we have people from all over the world listening, which is really wonderful because what that tells me is that we as a global yoga therapy community, we are making a difference. People from all over the world are coming together to talk about this thing called yoga therapy. And I'm really hopeful about the future of yoga therapy. When, once in a while, I get a little down and I think, oh my gosh, this is like pushing a boulder uphill. But I, I want to say to everyone to give us hope that there are fields out there such as chiropractic that have been pushing boulders uphill for over a hundred years and they're doing great work, most of them, and, and they're making a difference in the world and they may or may not be accepted in, you know, Western allopathic healthcare. I think there are a lot of chiropractors out there that are accepted, but a lot of them are really happy being what we call allied healthcare here in the United States, which is kind of like maybe not mainstream, but it's connected to healthcare. And maybe that's the first step for yoga therapy. I'm not saying we can't get into some hospitals and, and that type of thing, but I could be happy as an allied healthcare provider. I don't know about you. So that's number one. There's other fields out there that are showing us, even though this is really hard work 
to help people understand what we do, they're, they're still pushing along. It's still happening. And their, their work is very, very valuable in the world. But the second thing I want to say is that the world needs us more now than ever, right? That there's some serious stuff going on in the world today. And I don't have to list off, you know, what that is. I think we're, we're all living it and experiencing it, but this idea of lifestyle medicine, helping people have strategies to get through the day so they can sleep better and eat better and be in closer relationship and poop better. (laughs) All of it is really revolutionary, even though these teachings come from India and they're thousands of years old, something like having people drink a little bit of warm water all day long, you know, fill up a canister of warm water at the beginning of the day, have it on your desk and just sip on it all day long. And wow, your digestion is going to be so much better. That's essentially free. It's easy to do. It's a strategy that everybody has time for, and it can make a profound difference in that person's life. We all know how it feels to be constipated and not, not feel well in your lower abdomen and and low back. So things like that, this is what we have to offer. It's very elegant. It's very simple. The, the strategies that we provide are usually free or very inexpensive. Even if we want to provide asana classes and pranayamas and meditation, that can usually be done in a group, which is affordable. It can be put on recordings, which are very affordable. We have this amazing system of lifestyle management that really works. It's been time tested and anybody can use it all over the world and it's affordable. I cannot imagine why healthcare and all sorts, you know, psychologists and everyone wouldn't really be excited and interested in this, especially with the difficult times that we're having. I think what we need to get out there and promote is, Hey, we have this, we're doing this right. And we're here for you. So for example, I have a student who is doing great work in a hospital by taking a cart around to the different areas of the hospital, the different sections of the hospital. And it has healthy snacks, water. It has these little cards saying, slow down or take a deep breath. And they pass out these cards to everyone each day. And and people can put that little card on their desk, the healthcare workers. And then on the back of the card, there's a link to a YouTube video for breathing or pranayama or meditation, which they may or may not use, but even receiving that care of keeping yourself hydrated and here's a healthy snack and, and here's a card to remind you how to take care of yourself. That's important. That's this very simple intervention that can change a lot of people's lives. There's more and more places that are having a yoga meditation and nap room right there in the facility where if somebody needs a 15 minute break and they're losing it, or they just need to settle down a little bit, go into the little room, right? All of these things, as I said, they're very affordable. They're very simple. They're very elegant. There's no reason that people can't implement them, right? And they make a big difference. They let our staff understand that they're, they are cared about. So anyway, I just want you to be really, really hopeful about the future of yoga therapy, however you're practicing it, because we are making a difference. We are what the world needs. We look at the whole person, not just trying to manage symptoms, but we look at how to help people sleep better how to help people eat better, how to help people manage their stress. You know, if, if we can give an audio tape of long exhale breathing to help anyone go to sleep better or give them some little gestures, you know, hand gestures, what we call mudras or niyasams to do in bed at night and to, to kind of bring the attention inward, to bring the life force back inward when it's been kind of out all day long. These are very, very powerful tools that help provide the foundation for good health. 
if we don't get good sleep, we're not going to eat well. We're not going to relate well, right? So things like this, you know, regarding diet, we're not out there telling people how many calories are in something and you should make this choice over that choice. But we are experts in helping people change their state. And by that, I mean that if someone stops two or three times a day to do just a little bit of breathing or some kind of meditation or visualization, they can just slow down enough to feel, to breathe, to be a couple of times a day, once at 10.30 a.m., maybe 2.30 and 7.30 p.m., right? If they can just do that, their state, the way that their nervous system and their mind functions may just change over time. And from that more stable place, from that place of homeostasis, we tend to make better choices around food. So while we're not nutritionists, we are experts at changing the way the nervous system functions, the way your mind functions. And then there's this whole cascade of effects on your endocrine system, your digestive system, your cardiovascular system. I still, every single day, get excited about that. I feel like who else is doing that? Who else can change the state of our mind and can change the state of our system so completely with such simple, affordable techniques? I want to shout that from the mountaintops. I want everyone to hear that. And like I said, I think the world needs us now more than ever. During these difficult times of COVID and all the cascading effects financially, mentally, emotionally, that we're all having, we need this more than ever. So those of you who feel like giving up as a yoga therapist, or if you're a yoga teacher or, or a healthcare provider, wondering if you should get your education in yoga therapy, I say, yes, yes, yes. We are the future. We are exactly what the world needs. Do not have any doubt and don't, don't let yourself doubt take you out, right? That's I think the biggest thing when you have an emerging field like this and you're kind of siloed, like I live in the woods up in a cabin and I really don't have a lot of community right here in town with me. My community is online with my optimal state yoga therapy school and all of my faculty and our our students. That's my community, but I feel kind of lonely. Sometimes I feel like, what am I doing? Oh my gosh, I have this podcast? Is it even making a difference? Is the the world going to come around to understanding what yoga therapy is? Are people going to benefit from it? Like I can get into some dark places and wonder if what I'm doing in life even matters. And I have to remember and remind myself and kind of push down that self-doubt and just say, what else would I be doing that could make such an amazing difference in the world? I can't think of anything else. I was a a sports psychologist prior to becoming a yoga therapy person. And I love sports psychology. Don't get me wrong. But even as meaningful as that was helping athletes to perform their best, to live their best life, to be who they want to be, it didn't, it, it paled in comparison to the difference that I and all of you are making in the world every day. I mean, I like to tell people and I, I just told my, my faculty this as we did faculty evaluations this year. I said, we are so, so fortunate to have learned this in this lifetime. This was like secret knowledge for a long, long time. And not everybody had access to it. So number one, we got to learn it. And number two, we get to share it. It is our job. It is our dharma. It is our responsibility to share it with the world and make a difference in the world. You know, this this idea of having meaning and purpose in our lives is so special. There are many people that go through their whole life and they don't know who am I? Why am I here? How can I make a difference? They, they spend decades with those questions unanswered. And if you're listening to this podcast, you are somebody who gets to wake up every single morning and know who you are and why you're here and the positive difference that you can contribute to the world. That is probably the biggest gift of our lives. Even if we didn't make a difference, just doing the work regardless of the outcome is a blessing and a gift. 
And the truth is you are making a difference. So double bonus right there. So I just wanted to start with that to give us hope, to, to remember the world needs us, to remember that we have something really special that isn't being addressed by other healthcare providers and to stay focused on doing this good work in the world. Don't get distracted. There's so many people, you know, I say the next pandemic that we have to deal with that's already here on the doorstep is the mental health problems that were already there, but now they've just been increased because of the pandemic. Like I said, financially, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, people are crushed. And I think even our young people, I, I was just reading a study yesterday about how young Gen Z females are having more suicide and more attempted suicide than ever before at alarming numbers. We are here to help these young women and men because there are young men having this, this happen too. But if you really look at what yoga therapy can do in a holistic way from helping people to know who they are, helping them find why they're here and how they can be of service in the world, helping them to balance their mind and their nervous system, helping them to find ways to self-regulate helping them to become more self-aware when they're starting to get out of balance. These are precious, precious tools. You know, one of the projects I did recently with Krishna, our COO at Optimal State, is we wrote down all the different things that our graduates are doing in the world. And we came up with 37 different kind of career pathways, if you will. And I made little infographics like yoga therapist, and psychologist, basically using yoga therapy in the psych practice or yoga therapist at a rehabilitation center for alcohol addiction or drug addiction or yoga therapist and XYZ. We came up with 37 ways that our graduates are working in the world from working in high schools to colleges, to retreat centers. I mean, it was amazing. I was, I was kind of shocked <laughs> at how many different ways that people are distributing, if you will, yoga therapy out there in the world and really, really pleased to see that. So I just, again, I have so much hope. I think even though it's easy to get in your little silo and wonder if what you're doing matters and if it's going to work and is the field going to continue onward, the answer is yes. And we all just have to keep focused and, and keep going, you know, it's going to be okay. We're going to do this. So with that, I want to talk about a few other things. I want to just kind of review where we were this year. What, what did we do in terms of what did we cover? And I'll just give like kind of one sentence for, for each thing that we did this year, each guest that we had, if you will, so that we can kind of just review where we've been. I think that's always important in a year end review. And I'm looking for all of my people here. So we, I'm going to go, you know, from the most recent back down, we met with Christine Weber recently, and she talked about what she saw coming in healthcare and about neuroscience and, and how she's using yoga therapy to connect through neuroscience. We've talked to Heidi Crocker, who gave us an update on IAYT, the International Association of Yoga Therapists, and the certification exam that's up and coming, you know, how to use ICD codes to bill for yoga therapy. We talked to Srini Basan from Chennai, India, about what it is that the Bhagavad Gita has to show us in terms of mental health care and counseling skills. We talked to Indu Aurora about the humility that's required and to, to be a yoga teacher, yoga therapist, and how all of us are continuous lifelong learners and students. And some of the struggles she went through in her life, kind of getting where she is today. We talked to Marcy Evans about yoga therapy and autoimmune, and she gave us so many wonderful ways to help people who are having symptoms of autoimmune. We talked to Marlisa Sullivan, who has taken a new job at the Veterans Administration, and she is providing pain care 
to veterans and all the exciting activities that are happening there. We talked to Sonia Chapnick about sleep and intentional rest and what she calls optimal nidra, which is a form of yoga nidra that she's been producing. We talked to Sveta Vikram about what do chronic illness, writing, and the pandemic all have in common? (laughs) What do those three things have in common? They have in common being present, being in the moment, staying focused, being with what is, breathing through it. That was a very sweet interview. We talked to Kelly Bethel about taking yoga therapy into hospitals and how to look at what are the needs of all the different stakeholders. It's not just about teaching yoga. It's about figuring out what does administration want? What do the managers want? What do the people who are paying for the yoga therapy want? And really gearing up your presentation or your pitch to figure out what do those stakeholders want? We talked to Anjali Deva about digestion (laughs) and how to have better digestion through yoga therapy and Ayurveda. That was a fun one. We talked to Amy Weintraub about yoga therapy for mental health, specifically for anxiety and depression. We talked to Priya Verma about how to have conversations about COVID and COVID related things like vaccination and how do we actually stay in connection with people, even though potentially we have some pretty big disagreements. Uh, We talked to Lee Blaschke about retirement according to the the yogic traditions and what does it mean to retire and, and how do you work with yourself as you move through retirement? We talked to Jeevana Heyman about community and how he thinks that our yoga communities are kind of the new replacement. Instead of having a guru, we are responsible to our communities. And he has a new book out that he really goes into great depth about that called The Yoga Revolution. In the very beginning of the year, we talked to Alyssa Wolstrel, who is the new executive director of the International Association of Yoga Therapists. And we talked to her about the strategic plan and and what is IAYT here in the United States doing in the next few years with their strategic plan. We talked to Crystal Frazzi about bringing yoga therapy to very, very high functioning, high level women professionals and also social media and how she runs her business. We talked to Pamela Stokes Eggleston about trauma, especially military trauma and how she works with many, many women who've had sexual trauma in the military. And we talked to Harvey Rosenthal about how he was able to bring mental health services into the state of New York and what can yoga therapy learn from other systems that have already done things like this and really looking at how do you get it in the door? We talked to Melissa Sue Ver Ogden about PMDD, which is basically a very, very painful form of dealing with your menstrual cycle each month and, and the disassociation that can happen and the, the physical difficulties and mental, emotional difficulties and how she uses yoga and yoga therapy to help people with PMDD. We talked to Peggy Swarbrick about the eight dimensions of wellness, which are really a modern version of the Panchamaya model. And most of us in the yoga therapy world are using dealing with the, the physical layer of the human system, the more subtle, some people say the breath layer, the, the mental emotional layer, the kind of personality or life experience layer, and then the more spiritual layer. So Peggy's eight dimensions of wellness that she's been able to promote so successfully through health education are also a model for us yoga therapists to understand how to put these ancient teachings in kind of a more modern language that people can understand. We talked to Rochelle Payan, and she talked to us about bringing yoga and yoga therapy into all BIPOC spaces where people of color, indigenous people can actually heal because they feel safe in a space with other people that have experienced the same trauma as they have. 
we talked to Anne Marie Johnston about the Global Yoga Therapy Day, which was such a success this year online. And she's such a great businesswoman and marketer. So we talked kind of the business of yoga therapy with Anne Marie Johnston from Australia. We had an episode with Dr. Gail Parker, who is all about healing race-based trauma injury and also has a second new book out on that same topic. We talked to Dory Hutchinson, who is kind of in the area of psychiatric wellness at Boston University for 40 years or more. And again, what a model that is for us yoga therapists who are trying to figure out how to get into the door. She has demonstrated a beautiful way through the psychiatric wellness community that really mirrors beautifully how yoga therapy could get in and make a difference. We talked to Per Erez early on. He was one of our first guests and we, we went all over the place with him. Everything from what does it feel like to be a black man in the yoga therapy community and the yoga community, as well as an advocate for LGBTQIA, as well as, you know, really looking at some interesting concepts with respect to interoceptive awareness and how do we feel these yoga and yoga therapy and somatic experiences in our own body. So that was a lovely episode. We talked to Mala Cunningham all about yoga and yoga therapy for mental health and neuroscience. She really is interested in making that connection to neuroscience and bringing it to the world. We talked to Joy Stone about yoga, yoga therapy, and anxiety, and specifically really looking at our past and how it is that our past is imprinting and affecting our perception in this present moment. She loves to talk about the reticular activating system, which basically means that your brain will only grasp information that is in alignment with your beliefs. And the information that is not in alignment with your beliefs will fly right by you. And therefore, we all tend to have a lot of misperception in this life because we're only looking for things that kind of reinforce what we already believe. And we we are not open to new ideas. And that, of course, causes us suffering. We also had a wonderful interview with Stephen Ingram. And he was educating us all about LGBTQIA issues and especially yoga therapy for trans people, which is something that I think a lot of us have a need to to really understand and the pronouns and the areas that we as yoga therapists really need to be informed about in order to work with trans people. We spoke with Lori Highland Robertson, also from International Association of Yoga Therapists, about the upcoming conferences, the Symposium of Yoga Therapy and Research, the SITAR conference that happens every June, and then the SYR conference, the Symposium of Yoga Research that happens every fall, just kind of reminding people about those conferences and how important they are to our field, especially in terms of research. So that's kind of a summary of most of our episodes. The last two that I have here on my list are Stephanie Von Meteren, who was talking to us about menopause and yoga therapy and women's wellness. And then Shaila Vaidya, who talked to us about post-concussion syndrome and yoga therapy and how she herself got through her concussion. And now she's using that to help other people who have also had concussions. So that was our first 33 episodes, if you will. We already have all of our guests scheduled through next May, if you can believe that. And then I've got a waiting list of of people that I'll ask for May 2022 and beyond. But I'm going to keep trying to bring you really interesting and heartfelt guests. You know, I want to say that I have a lot of people who contact me and say, Hey, I'd like to be on the podcast. And usually it's kind of a form email from some promoter that has decided that they're going to try to get their person on many podcasts, which I can appreciate the need for that. But many of the people who contact me 
have not actually thought deeply about this pretty small niche of yoga therapy and how what their guest has to say pertains to us who are interested in yoga therapy. So for example, someone might contact me and say, I want to talk about yoga and compassion. And my email back is, that's a lovely topic. And if you can tell me how that can really specifically help yoga therapists do their job better, I would love to have you on the show. And usually I, I get something back like, well, I haven't, I don't know too much about yoga therapy. And I say, okay, well, this, this is a very niche podcast. So if you're wanting to be a guest on this show, which I'm more than happy to entertain, I want more new people with great ideas. Just remember that we're going into a very small niche of yoga therapy and anything we do on this podcast, really, I want it to really be yoga therapy, not therapeutic yoga or yoga, which are all both wonderful. But my goal is to help you, the listeners, increase your education, become inspired, feel like you belong to this yoga therapy community, to walk away feeling like, yes, I can do my job better as a result of this podcast. You know, the, the last episode of the year that we have coming out that I didn't talk about yet is Amit Garg, who's a Vedic astrologer. And that's a really cool topic to think about with yoga therapy that I think a lot of people don't know much about, right? So for me, that's a really sweet spot. Where do yoga therapy and Vedic astrology kind of connect? That's the kind of potency that I'm looking for. So if you want to be a guest, please, please, please contact me, but come to me with the information of how am I going to help yoga therapists and people who maybe are interested in yoga therapy do their job better? How am I going to inspire them? How am I going to make them laugh, make them feel more human, make them feel more connected to themselves and to humanity, specifically through the lens of yoga therapy? So another thing I want to do kind of in our, our yearly review here is I want to read some of the beautiful, beautiful reviews that we have gotten this year. And anybody who's willing to give us a review on your favorite podcast station, I would really love for you to do that. And the one that seems to have the most reviews so far is Apple podcast, because as I said, that's where about 70% of our listeners are. So I'm going to just read a few of these. They're so special to me. And I just feel really, really happy that people have taken the time to go in there and do these. So someone wrote, Amy and the guests are spectacular. For all you newly certified yoga therapists, these podcasts are a must. Amy has an amazing lineup of shows and she comes to each interview so prepared and her questions and reflections are wonderful. And she has a beautiful voice. That's just lovely. Thank you to who, whomever wrote that. Someone else wrote, this is an absolute gem. The podcast is so good. Amy leads such in-depth interviews and discussions about the field of yoga therapy and other skilled yogis who are making a difference. Together, they cover diverse and rich topics. So these are the types of reviews that really, really help us to spread the podcast to more people. And of course, like I said in the beginning, if you like the podcast, share an episode that really touched you with someone else say, Hey, here's the text. I just heard this episode and I really think you would like it. It's, it's very similar to what we were talking about the other day over tea. And I think it might provide some insight for you. So the more you share, the easier it is for us to get our message out there. And we thank you ahead of time. So our goal here is to uplift humanity to inspire yoga therapists and anyone who's interested in yoga therapy. It's to have in-depth conversations and communication about the field and to really provide the in-depth interviews that will help you orient yourself in the field and learn some new skills. And again, belonging, like we are a community. We are a very, very small niche in the big ocean of, of yoga and integrative health. 
And we need each other. We need each other to remember what we're doing and how important it is and that we are making a difference and that we should not give up hope, especially for those of you that are like me, that are kind of siloed in your own little house, uh, your own little community, and you don't have anybody else out there. Sometimes it kind of feels like you're, you know, screaming into the, the void. <laughs> and I want you all to know that you're not, we're, we're here, we're together, we're doing this. So the last little thing that I want to say to kind of wrap up our season one and the end of year 2021 is that if you feel inclined, we support an organization called the Krishnamacharya Yoga Mandaram in Chennai, India, and they have what's called a Mitra program where they provide not just yoga, but also resources to women and children in Chennai, India that are in need of assistance. So there could be food, there could be water, there could be meals, there could be yoga. And it all started back in 2006 when I visited one of the Mitra programs at the KYM in a women's prison. And they were teaching the yoga to the women. And in addition, bringing a really nice meal and this kind of thing. So it just touched me so much to go and observe this, that this is something that's stayed with me long-term. And I, I always promised that if I had a platform to help promote the KYM Mitra program, that I would do that. And so there's links in the show notes about how you can contribute to that on a, a monthly basis is what we would love. Even $5 a month, we can send you a, a little invoice for $5 a month and put it on repeat. And every, every little bit helps. I don't know if you are aware, but $5 in India can do a whole lot of good every month. So that is something that we're going to continue. And then our last thing that I want to tell you is that we have decided in the new year that in addition to giving you this podcast every single week, that we are going to give you another gift. And that is every week, we're going to take one of the infographics that I've created and those of you who know me know that I am an infographic queen around yoga therapy. And if you sign up for our newsletter and tell us what you're interested in, we'll have like a, you know, kind of check boxes. Do you like yoga therapy for mental health? Do you like yoga therapy for low back? Do you like yoga therapy for relationships? Do you like yoga therapy for healthcare workers? We'll have all these categories. And if you tick the categories that you particularly are interested in, we will send you infographics that you might be able to use in your work. So if you're on the mental health list, every time the show has a mental health episode, we'll have a mental health and yoga therapy infographic that goes with that episode. And you'll automatically be sent that because you ticked off. I like yoga therapy and mental health. Now, if you want to tick off all the boxes, because you want a new infographic sent to you every single week, that is no problem. We are here to support you. We would love to, to do that with you. So watch out for that in the new year. And when we come back in January, we're taking a few weeks off for the holiday here, but we will have that set up where in the show notes, there'll be a link that will say, do you want the free infographic for this week sent to you? You'll be directed to kind of a, a backend page on our website and it will ask you what are the topics you're interested in. You click that, you give us permission to send it to you and we'll, we'll make sure you get those. So that's kind of a new thing that we're excited to provide to all of you because we appreciate you. We're so glad that you're here with us each week, providing inspiration and connection and communication and belonging and we want to stay connected to you in 2022. So have a wonderful holiday season. Thank you all for being with us in this first season. And when we come back mid-January, we already have the guests lined up and we will we'll continue on with season number two. Thank you for listening to the Yoga Therapy Hour with Amy Wheeler podcast. Another nonprofit organization that we like to support through this podcast is the Krishnamacharya Yoga Mandram in Chennai, India. They are the source for the teachings of the Optimal State Yoga Therapy School, and we are so grateful. 
The KYM's Mitra Division offers free yoga therapy training to a large number of socially and economically underprivileged children and women in Chennai. Feel free to support them through the link listed below on Red Circle. And we also have details on our website, which is also listed below. Please also note that we have recently developed a mental health tracking mobile app based on yogic and Ayurvedic principles. The app helps practitioners to observe their mental habits and patterns throughout the different times of day, the seasons of the year, and the stages of life. This is a useful tool for healthcare providers, yoga teachers, yoga therapists, and all of the people that they serve. Check it out on the App Store. It's called the Optimal State App. And finally, a special thank you to our team here at Optimal State. We are truly a global family. George Mantuan, one of our executive producers. Adam Satchel, senior media producer and sound engineer from the Philippines. Krishna Panchal, a producer from Canada. Modupe Abdullahi, who does the show notes and is an editor for us from Nigeria and Peter Morley, who wrote and produced the music for this show, who lives in Australia. Find more about Peter's work at www.zenmusic.biz. Thank you for listening, and we'll see you next time.